pardon the interruption, but I'm Mike Wilbaugh, and Microsoft developed the website that can accurately guess your age. Bob, have you tried it? I'm Bob Ryan. Yep, nailed it, right on the head. 37! Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. I want that same, I want that treatment. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> good technology. I'm also good technology. New technology. I'm good. Okay. New technology making me newer or younger. Kind of like my inner Tony. I love technology. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to PCI. Tony Kornheiser has one last day off, allegedly. So I'm joined by our great friend from the Boston Globe, Hall of Fame basketball writer Bob Ryan. <laughs> Man, we begin not with talk about a draft or fight hype, but the magnificent playoff basketball series that keeps on giving. Spurs Clippers, which is now going to Game 7 Saturday night here in Los Angeles, compliments of the Clippers. Chris Paul played fabulously in the second half, and because if you can believe Greg Popovich, his team was charm and soft the entire game. So, Bob, who would you rather be tomorrow, the historically great champs playing on the road or the home team looking for the first real signature win in franchise history? The series that should not even be taking place, at least not in the first round. We That's all know right, that. It shouldn't. Okay, we all know that. Answer is, I think the Clippers' time has come. And, and I think we're going to see the last hurrah of the great, great Spurs era with uh, perhaps Duncan. Who knows? He's, he's, he needs a contract next year. So does Ginobili. Who knows? Anyway. This is what a fascinating series. We have one team that has no depth, that, that, and we have another team that keeps rolling out guys all the time. But fact of the matter is, I like the spunk that the Clippers are showing. This is a big test for them, as you well know. And so far, I think they're fooling a lot of people who doubted their grit, shall we say. Well, Bobby, I got two issues, and I, I think I agree with you. I'm not picking this series. I just want to see it. I don't want to pick anymore. I picked the wrong team the last like, three games in a row. I've been covering a lot of this series. Yeah. Yeah. But, Bob, two things have me concerned. The first one is Glenn Big Baby Davis, yeah. who we saw, you know, carted out <laughs> of the arena last night. You know, what's his availability? Is it hard right? to believe he's going to be there at all? And what do they do? They have no – you mentioned no depth, and you're on the money, Bob. How do you have no depth and then get a guy hurt, one of the three guys Dr. Yeah. Rivers yeah. uses, and then you don't have him? And the other thing is this. There's no momentum in this series. Whoever is reactive, and we already heard Pop say last night three times, soft, soft, soft. Mm -hmm. Whoever is reactive seems to be the best team the next game, and that would point to San Antonio. It's just, it's a wonderful series. It's a shame it had to happen now, and it's a bigger shame that one of these two is going to be out tomorrow night. Well, if Big Baby is out, and then... They're going to, there's two possibilities here. One is that they awaken who do, he do Turkolo at the end of the bench and, and, and just let him know I why. I plan B. Let him know, know why he's in the uniform in the front. <laughs> more like, as Hubie would say, more likely. More likely. Spencer Hawes finally earns his pay. Got After you. 82 games and a, six playoff games, they got to get something out of Spencer Hawes. I agree. Now, with you, Bob. After squeaking by the Bucks in game six, that's a joke, see, they won by 54. The Bulls now face the Cavs. Now, the Bulls are pretty deep, Mike. Nice roster. Ah, but the Cavs have a Mr. LeBron James and a Mr. Kyrie Irving. So, I give you a choice of which team you'd like to coach in this series. The team with the most good players or the team with the best player, a very good player, and some okay ones. Well, Bob, you know, <laughs> being a lifelong observer and fan of the Chicago Bulls, I've been on the other side of this equation in terms of assessing a team. And you always wanted to have the best player because the best player was Michael Jordan. Now, he had another top forever player who was vastly underrated than Scottie Pippen riding with him at all times. But there were a lot of teams like the Knicks teams in the 80s and the early 90s, you know, like those Cavaliers teams that had Brad Doherty yep. and Mark Price and Ron Harper. And it was flip-flop totally. The Bulls had the best player, yep. some Scotty and some other guys, and the other teams, which were fortified with six, seven really terrific players, could never beat the Bulls. A couple so, of things working against the, against the Cavaliers, though, Bob. No Kevin Love for the series and no J.R. Smith for two, two games, that's like 32 points you've got to replace. That's hard. That could change the whole balance of the series. I'm a Bulls unabashed fan of this Bulls group. I, I love the players. I'm, I'm a, but I, I don't trust them. They're not reliable. I agree. They're not reliable. They're not. I, you can't I, trust them at all. I, I can't invest in them uh, in, in emotionally. In other words, you know, I think LeBron is going to remind us all that he is the best player. He can solve so many different problems for a team on the court at both ends of the floor. And I expect him to stand very, very tall and, and, and pull them through. I look for a split in one and two. 
I look for a split because I don't trust the Bulls, and that won't be enough. The Bulls need two games because LeBron's going to get a game on the road. He always does, always. Mm -hmm. They need two games on well, the road because I don't see Cleveland that. has home court advantage. I don't see it either, Bob. But you look, if the Bulls could play 75%, of last night, not 100%, because no team can do that that often. Right. That would be good enough to win the series. But the Bulls don't do that. They've become an annoying team because they don't play with the focus and just outward intensity bordering on rage that they need to all the time. They just don't do it for whatever reason. And there's some health issues there, too, particularly with Noah. You know, so, but I'm, going, I, I'm, I'm going with LeBron. I have to. Sorry. No, all sorry, right. Let's, sorry. Let's go to the draft. <laughs> where there was nothing in the way of surprises or drama, nothing. No trade involving Phillip Rivers, no deal up by trader Chip Kelly to get Marcus Mariota. All we got today is quasi-news involving Jameis Winston and a crab leg photo on Instagram, which was rather quickly deleted. Bob, there is a reasonable story as to why Winston posed with said crab legs. Do you find this funny enough to lessen concerns about him or annoying to the point where it makes you wonder whether the kid gets it? I think he's just the jerk, and he's always going to be a jerk, but maybe one who can really play. And the reason that this thing irks me a little bit with the crab legs is that he changed his story. You know, I mean, they changed his story in the 11th, almost a year later. Now he's telling us they gave him the things. That, that wasn't what he said the last time. It was he forgot. I don't, I don't want So he's, I, I don't know. I, I have, I'm tired of his act and his off-the-field act, but I don't think it's, it's – uh, catastrophically bad. I don't think that there's anything they can't live with. I think they're going to be, you know, wang 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 wangling their finger at him a lot of times constantly. over the years. Yeah, constantly. We've seen, we've seen this happen over the years with certain guys, Bob. We always think, oh, they're going to mature. They're going to get better. And then not, not particularly. I mean, really. And so the, 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 the real scary thing is if your quarterback can have this kind of behavior and lead you anywhere. But in this case, look, okay, so Sean King, former Tampa quarterback, provides mm. some backstory here about this involving charity and the picture of him saying, okay, I'll gladly do this. But it's, why is it always Winston involved in something that sort of, it, it fits somewhere between stupid and just total knuckleheadedness? There's a question. Why is, it, why is it always him involved in this? And once again, can your quarterback, my quarterback, can your quarterback have this behavior and lead you anywhere? Well, it's wiring. He's just who he is. I think that's just, he, he's impish, he's envelope pusher, whatever way you want to describe him. That's his personality. He wants to have fun. That's his personality. I understand all that. And I, I really don't think it's going to be the biggest problem. I think he's going to be, they'll, they'll learn to live with it. I think, I really do. All right, now, the Eagles did not trade up to get Marcus Mariotto. Oh, look, I had, I had to do it, all right? <laughs> but not according to people in the know for lack of trying. But Chip Kelly vehemently denies that in addition to draft picks and an unspecified player or two, he also offered Sam Bradford to the Titans. I said Sam Bradford. Now, are you buying this, or does he have to send Bradford flowers and candy and promise to make the bet all by himself? <laughs> Bob, it's all Chip Kelly's done since, you know, the last day of the season is trade people or try to trade people. So, I mean, why would he not get any benefit of the doubt on this? I, now, I don't think it makes that big a difference because we know – Look, sensitive feelings being hurt matter in the NBA where one player can make or destroy a franchise and often does. Hurts in Major League Baseball at times, too. We're talking about a truly individual sport. And football doesn't matter. They just get rid of you. Guys live in pro football all the time with the coach slash GM, the guy with the power saying get out or threatening to throw them out. This is an everyday occurrence, business as usual. I, I believe Chip Kelly tried to trade everybody. He'll continue to do it. I don't think it matters. I think there's two issues here. One is Chip Kelly. Chip Kelly is the coach's bad boy. You know, he's the coach you have to live with. He's going to That's say right. and do things that, and, 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 you know, cause embarrassment perhaps or angst or aggravation or annoyance, whatever. Distraction. He would call it if somebody Ooh, else did Okay, it. good. Okay. Distraction. So he's the coach you've got to deal with. They're going to, if he's good enough, if he produces, they'll, they'll live with him, okay? The other thing is, oh, if anything, Sam Bradford, any player, you're right, grow up if, if you ha were to have a problem. I'm saying he does. I, I, I'm not saying Sam Bradford does have a problem, but he doesn't completely get it. But let's hope that he does because you, you're a professional. You have to understand uh, what's he done, by the way, so that he would feel aggrieved about anything, quite frankly, except collect uh, big paychecks and cash them without a lot of production yet. <laughs> without so, playing yeah. all that much. Right. But Jim Kelly, you know, the question, Bob, is how deep into the summer can he do this and still have his players trust him? At some point, That's it. He's got players have no power in the NFL? None. 
but they you have to get them to trust you to lead them in the way that Chip Kelly wants to lead them. Will he be able to do that come August if these sorts of reports and rumors persist? That's the big question. Management will have to learn to live with his quirks. We have come to the moment of truth in this show, Bob Ryan. Mm -hmm. Time to pick the fight. This used to be a primary driver of sports conversation <laughs> for about 100 years in America and a long-time obsession of sports writers like Ryan and Wilbon and Kornheiser, wherever he is. But it's the first time in nearly 20 years there's been a fight that has inspired this kind of curiosity and passion. Bob Floyd Mayweather or Manny Pacquiao, who you got and why? This fight is not just five years too late. It's probably 10 years too late in terms of seeing these fighters at their best. But they're here, and, and, and it's, it's worthy of conversation. Floyd Mayweather is the greatest defensive boxer of his time, or maybe of any time, and he will find a way to win this fight. I just think, hey, well, you know, I'm going along with the experts who say that he figures you out, and by the fourth or fifth round, he will take control of the fight, and he knows how to fight a defensive fight. And, and, and you can, I'm betting that it will be a yawning 15-round decision. Boy, we have not talked about this before now, you and I, but I believe exactly what you believe. I believe a unanimous decision in Floyd Mayweather's favor because Pacquiao won't be able to hit him. Yeah. Because this is what Floyd Mayweather does. He, he solves you and then he frustrates you. And you are then trying things outside your lane, if you will, to get to Floyd Mayweather. Now, we, we, we've heard Freddie Roach yesterday here on PTI. He talked about Pacquiao trying to go to the body more. You know, guys get frustrated. They want to go head hunting, particularly late in fights, and they can't find Floyd's head. He promises Pacquiao's different. He's going to be able to go to the body and hit him hard enough to get the head to drop, which is a classic boxing strategy. I still don't think it's going to work, Bob. I think that Floyd Mayweather is going to figure out how to put that defense, how to employ it, and frustrate Pacquiao when it's in. I misspoke. Of course, it's going to be 12 rounds, not 15, and I do think it will be 12. Two big numbers here, zero and five. Pacquiao has, is mortal. Pacquiao, last time we saw him, he was staring up at the ceiling, okay? Or You've the seen sky, whatever down. it was. That's right. And so right. Uh, I, I just don't think this, I, I think it, it's going to be a very lopsided decision, I think. You got very lopsided. Wow. Okay, I, I got unanimous decision. I'm, I'm hoping it can be a fight worthy of oh, some of this fight, but I doubt it. All right. All right, let's take a break. We're coming up. What do we make of Kevin Durant's reaction to this Billy Donovan hire? And the Niners messed with tradition and come up with a new set of uniforms. We'll tell you exactly what we think of them. They stink. Let's yeah. start now. They stink. Uh, They're ugly. <laughs> They're hideous. The Niners... Geico presents Strange Saving Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Whenever I'm on the road, Kornheiser always complains, whines. Oh, i got to read the emails. But I know Bob is far too much a gentleman for that. Bob. Will you do the honors, please? Well, he did give me some advice. He said, don't let him push you around. I'm sure. All that right. sounds like him. All right, I'll do sounds that. like something he'd leave okay. in your dressing room. Oh, did you see what happened in Madison Square Garden last night? Now, afterward, will the Caps' last second goal have any carryover effect on that series with the Rangers? Well, Bob, you know what's interesting? I, I mean, I, clearly I'm not at that series because I'm at the Spurs and Clippers series. But when you score a goal this late or you win a game in any sort of series of back and forth, it's like you figure automatically you presume there's momentum. But, you know, in this particular series, again, I'm talking about Spurs, Clippers, both coaches have talked about no momentum. i got to think the Rangers playing game two at home, desperately in need to even that series and not go to Washington down 0-2. They got to win that game, and they know it, and you put out the disappointment even though it had to be crushing. If there's one thing I've learned about playoff comp competition in both baseball and ba uh, basketball and hockey, it's that, that when the game's over, it's over. 99% uh, of the time. Best example, you know the famous Jerry West half court, no, not yes. 80 foot shot? Yes. Tied it up, right? Who right. won the game? <laughs> not the Lakers. Not the Lakers. <laughs> and I don't right. think it's going to have any effect, but what a play! by Ovechkin, and I still don't know how the wrist even flicked from Ward. And Ovechkin's starting to stand up, starting to, you know, show All some right. grace under pressure. Alex Ovechkin, he's been criticized for not doing that in the okay. past. Justifiably. 
Now, what does Kevin Durant's whoa, oh, excessive praise of Billy Donovan say to you about Durant's future in OKC? Nothing. <laughs> if we don't want to read into anything about a game in a series when there's another one coming in two days. Let's not read into these statements too much, whether they're on mm -hmm. Instagram, whether they're tweeted, whether they're uttered, you know, the old-fashioned way. I mean, if, if they start off two and nine, mm -hmm. then all this effusive praise, somebody's going to be doing a moonwalk. So you got to get into the season and see how it plays out. This is what he should do. Kevin Durant's the face of that team. He's supporting the organization's choice of Billy Donovan as the new hire. This is what he ought to do. What does it mean? Nothing. First of all, I, I hope that Kevin Durant has a full recovery. This isn't guaranteed. That's right. That's Let's the most important thing, that. Bob. You're right. Let's start with that. I mean, I just want to point that out. There's no guarantee about his future health. Okay. Um, I'm with you. But the thing is, curious, uh, also curious about him, uh, I don't know where Kevin Durant's coming from anymore. I, I don't know who this guy is anymore. I mean, just, you know, that it seems to me he's really... Uh, statements, uh, all kinds of wild stuff. I don't know. Fine. I'm glad. I think Billy Donovan knows better than to get too excited about what Kevin Durant said. So, yeah. Yeah. Durant was at the press conference today, though. He's right. showing up. Right. I know. He's going to learn. All in. Billy's going to learn and grow. I hope you realize that. He's going to learn and grow. <laughs> right now. All right. Question is, are you guys really going to go the whole week and not talk about the Kentucky Derby? Of course not. We're going to talk about it. Well, everybody else has gone the whole week and hasn't talked about the Kentucky <laughs> Derby. Look, this field is said to be stacked, Bob. American Pharaoh is the favorite. There's an unbeaten Dortmund. I mean, there's, there's all carpe diem, materiality. There's all these, these horses that, including several that are undefeated coming in to the race, a bunch of undefeated horses. But look, the, the, the Kentucky Derby has been obliterated, except if you are just a, one of the horsey people like Tony used to be by, in order, the fight, and then the playoffs. There's so many things, and the draft. There's so many things going on. The Derby has been pushed to the back, 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 back burner, and that's just the way it is. Well, I'll tell you who's got a lot at stake here is Bob Baffert, who hasn't won for a while. He's won three times, but he's got these two favorite horses. You know, he's got both American Pharaoh and Dortmund, and the other guy who's, I think, I'm interested in is Todd Pletcher, who's got three horses in. You know what he is? He's a famous trainer. He's with all his horses for the, all of the derbies. He's won for 40. So it'd be, you know, it'd be nice. If will you could. watch? Will you watch the derby? Oh, I always watch the derby, and I want to hear that. Even call. this year. Down the stretch they come. I wait for that every year. I always wait for that. Okay, very good. Okay, last let's last one, and it is this: the Niners have introduced black jerseys. Thumbs up or thumbs down? It's not even. That's not severe enough. This is the stupidest thing that a franchise of significance can do. It doesn't matter if Jacksonville introduces black jerseys. The league ought to say no. Yeah. The league ought to say no. Stop pandering. You're the 49ers. You've got classic uniforms. Wear those forever. I'm, I'm so glad, other than the occasional throwback, that the Bears and the Packers, they don't, they don't go around screwing around with the uniforms all the time. The San Francisco 49ers, these are hideous. It's like the Cleveland Browns and their new stupid uniforms, and the league ought to put a stop to this, Bob. I have a question for you. Do you think across the bay, are they laughing or yes. are they screaming? The laughing. team, they, they are the black. The uniforms, they are That's the right. symbol, they are the and they, silver, baby. They have patented this in the NFL. The Raiders, they got, I would think they're laughing, right? They ought to be embarrassed, the 49ers, to be a franchise of this magnitude. A franchise that matters so much to the NFL and pandering. Get, this is awful. It's awful. Thank you, you for your you're positive. You're sure about that? All right. We're taking one last break. But still to come. Cardio Jones tweets out that he's leaving Ohio State. Bobby, watch out. And will the Nets show up tonight and push the Hawks to a game seven? Can I get one more awful on the uniforms? Go ahead. Let me hear it awful. again. That's that smelly. ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. <laughs> Comes alive. The NBA. The San Antonio Spurs are the world champions. Major League Baseball. San Francisco Giants are the champions of the baseball world. The new college football playoff. College football playoff national champions, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Your home for the best in sports play-by-play. -play. ESPN Radio. Time to get happy, people. Happy 34th birthday, Wes Welker. You already received the best birthday gift imaginable for a man who has everything. Good health news. What could be better as a free agent than hearing from one of the nation's top experts on concussions, neck, and spine injuries that you are good to resume your NFL career? I don't care what that guy said, Mike. My advice is he should retire immediately. 
I you like him too much. Get, get out while you're healthy and happy. Yep. Huh? Happy anniversary, Nolan Ryan. On this day 24 years ago, at the unthinkable age of 44, you threw your record seventh and final no-no in a 3-0 win over Toronto. Somehow baseball has become convinced that only offense is exciting, but there aren't five offensive players in the game today who are as exciting to watch as Nolan Ryan was. Quiz time for you. How many K's that night, Mike? 12, 14. Six came! It's a beast! And 44! I know. Probably still throw some innings. A very melancholy happy trails to wrestling champ Vern Gagne, whose passing we learned of today. For those of us living in AWA country, the upper Midwest, Gagne was the ultimate good guy. The man who kept the world safe from the mad dog Vashans, Nick Bockwinkles, and pretty boy Bobby Heenans. In the late 1940s, he was an alternate to the U.S. Olympic wrestling team, and he brawled with all the great ones into the 1980s when he was in his 50s. It was well known, Mike, that among all the wrestlers, he was the best wrestler. The three best watching wrestler. like every big match yep. of his, Bobby. Just one era, Bob. You said the last time we saw Pacquiao, he was on the canvas. Well, that's the last thing most of us remember. But he's actually won three times since then. So you got to apologize. It left a big impression on me. I do. I apologize. We're running out of show. Let's go to the big finish. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred says he's a status quo guy when it comes to the DH. You okay with that? No, I'm not. One set of rules, Commissioner. One. Ohio State quarterback Cardell Jones joke tweeted today he was transferring to Akron. And then he declared it a May Fool's joke. Funny? Not to Buckeye Nation. Struggling A-Rod not in the lineup at Fenway tonight. He's not going to tie Mays this weekend, is he? Sunday night baseball. That's when he's going to do it. Wild at Blackhawks start tonight. Who you got and why? We've eliminated Minnesota the last two years. I'm worried, but I'm still, of course, picking the Blackhawks. Bob, last one. Hawks at Nets. Game six. Are the Hawks going to close it out? No. Jared Jack off the bench for 20. We're going seven. Like that. All right, we're like out of that. time. Mike's back on Monday, and I'm Bob Ryan. Oh, or Tony's back on Monday. I'm back Monday, too, in the studio. Have a great weekend, knuckleheads. Check us out on iTunes. Where did that come from? Baseball's best go head to head in interleague action when the Tigers head to St. Louis to face the Cardinals. That one is gone. The pregame at 7 Eastern, first pitch at 8, Sunday on ESPN and ESPN Radio.